Splash and Safari is the attached water park at Holiday World in Santa Claus, Indiana. Affiliated water parks typically aren't as good as standalone water parks, but Splash and Safari is an exception. This is an award-winning water park, and many consider it to be among the best water parks in the world, myself included. In this video, I will review Splash and Safari and explain why I think it's worthy as the title as one of the best water parks out there. Splash and Safari was added to Holiday World for the 1993 season. This water park started small, but it now occupies roughly one third of the park, covering 40 of the park's 125 acres. Splash and Safari really gained notoriety in the 2000s after adding a series of pro slide water slides, a few of which were prototypes. The relationship has been mutually beneficial for both sides. In 2002, the park added Zimbabwe, the world's longest enclosed water slide. This family raft slide stands 102 feet or 31 meters tall and covers 887 feet or 270 meters in complete darkness. While the forces and elements on this slide don't really stand out, the length provided a satisfying ride that lasted far longer than most water slides. In 2003, the park added Zynga, one of the first pro slide tornadoes. And Zynga actually won the Golden Ticket Award for the best water slide in the year it debuted. Pro Slide has built nearly 100 of these slides across the globe now, but when it debuted, Zynga was one of the prototypes. This slide wowed the industry for its visually stunning and colossal funnel, but it still packs a punch to this day with its steep drop and disorienting undulations in the supersized funnel. But the biggest splashes, both literally and figuratively, occurred with the trio of water coasters. Splash and Safari unveiled Wildebeest in 2010 for five and a half million dollars. When it opened, it was the longest hydromagnetic water coaster with eight uphill launches and 1,710 feet or 520 meters of track. These uphill sections were powered by linear induction motors or LIMs to quickly propel rafts uphill. This hydromagnetic water coaster is not only notable for its length, but is also among the best water slides in the world for delivering airtime. Wildebeest has a seemingly endless series of drops and ascents, many of which deliver airtime. This airtime is particularly freaky since you have absolutely no restraints. Most of the airtime consists of quick pops, but the two shed drops deliver some odd sustained floater airtime for a water slide. I have a separate review that goes into more detail, but Wildebeest is worthy of its title as the world's best water slide, even though there are a few I personally prefer. One of which just happens to be next door in Mammoth. Because of the success of Wildebeest, the park returned to Pro Slide in 2012 for Mammoth. The slide would cost $9 million, which would be Holiday World's biggest investment to date. The hydromagnetic water coaster would steal Wildebeest's record as the world's longest hydromagnetic water coaster with 1,763 feet or 537 meters of track. Whether or not this slide still retains this record is debated. As Toothless's trickling torpedo at the DreamWorks water park at the American Dream Mall is advertised as being longer, but no stats are given for that slide. When Mammoth was announced in 2011, I remember many enthusiasts criticizing the park's decision at the time, stating the ride would be redundant with Wildebeest next door. But Mammoth silenced its critics once it opened. It's one of the best water slides in the world. Mammoth provides a radically different ride experience. Unlike most water coasters that feature inline seating like Wildebeest, Mammoth has circular rafts seating up to six riders. This has several advantages. For one, the rafts can spin throughout the ride, which adds an all new dimension to this experience. Two, the airtime is crazy. While Wildebeest is the one that wins the award for the best water slide in the Amusement Today poll, I personally prefer Mammoth by a slim margin. I also have a separate review on this attraction if you want to hear more of my thoughts on it. Then in 2020, the park added Cheetah Chase, a dual slide racing water coaster that would be the world's first launched water coaster. This one doesn't have the airtime of the prior two water coasters, but this slide would differentiate itself with the racing element and superior sense of speed. Cheetah Chase has a few side-by-side -side sections and never really slows down, and you get comically dosed with water atop each hill. While I far prefer Wildebeest and Mammoth, Cheetah Chase is a solid slide that I also have a separate review on. 
The other nice thing with all three of these water coasters is that they have stations similar to roller coasters. Rather than hiking up a 5 to 10 story slide tower, you board these water slides at ground level and are carried atop to the ride's highest point. This not only improves the overall guest satisfaction, but it also makes the attractions more accessible. Beyond the headliners, you have a few other slides. You have the Jungle Racer Mat Racer Slide, which is a 5 story, 10 lane slide with a few humps in the way down. You have Bakuli, a massive bowl slide. You have Watubi, a family raft slide that rides similarly to Zimbabwe, except this one is not enclosed. And then you have Otorongo, a tube slide tower on a hill with two twisting slides and another one with a sizable drop down the hill. And do you notice anything odd about Splash and Safari's slide lineup? There are zero adult body slides. Every slide has a multi-person tube or raft except for Jungle Racer. And on that slide, you ride right next to the other riders. I believe Holiday World was quoted at one point saying that they want their attractions to be experienced together, which is why there are no adult body slides. The only body slides you'll find are for kids. Beyond the slides, you have a few wave pools and a lazy river. This is odd even for a small water park to have no body slides, let alone one that receives as many accolades as Splash and Safari. While I do wish the park would add a body slide someday to complement the park's offerings, I really can't complain about their slide lineup. They have three of my favorite slide type in the world in water coasters. Most parks are lucky to even have one of these slides, and the park covers all thrill levels with these slides. Splash and Safari is a sizable water park, but it is entirely developed and boxed in by Legend, Voyage, and The Woods. The park did try expanding the water park in 2013 by building on the hillside leading up to Thunderbird. This is where Hyena Falls Slide Complex and Hyena Springs Kids Play Area were previously located. This also allowed the park to assimilate the former Pilgrim's Plunge ride into the water park. Pilgrim's Plunge opened in 2009 and it was renamed Giraffica in 2013 when it was transitioned from the Thanksgiving area to Splash and Safari. While this Intamin ride did seem better suited for the water park because of its soaking splash, the ride was extremely unreliable and removed after the 2013 season. This left Hyena Falls as a lame duck in its own area. The ride's distance from the rest of the water park caused it to be removed after the 2019 season. It will be interesting what the park decides to do in the future for water park additions, as their most recent one in Cheetah Chase was crammed above a pre-existing walkway. In peak season, Splash and Safari typically opens one hour after the dry park, and it closes one to two hours early. And from my experience, Splash and Safari seems to be busier than the amusement park side for majority of the day. The three water coasters in particular can have hour-long waits on busy days. For that reason, I strongly recommend riding these attractions immediately after the water park opens to minimize your wait times. The park does close the queue lines early for these attractions, so it's risky trying to hit them towards the end of the day. If you're alone or don't mind splitting up your party, you can save a lot of time using the single rider line on Wildebeest and Mammoth. I have never waited more than 5-10 to 10 minutes using this approach. A no for single riders, on the other water slides that require a minimum of 2 riders, Holiday World will do their best to pair you with another group as long as you satisfy the weight limit. Like the dry side, the staff at Splash and Safari is incredible. They perfectly balance efficiency and friendliness, which is why they're so helpful when it comes to pairing up groups to meet weight limits. The water park is just as clean as the dry side, and the slides always seem to have fresh coats of paint. While the water park doesn't have any theming beyond rides being named after animals, Splash and Safari does look quite nice and it has a lot of kinetic energy between the roller coasters that come whizzing by on the park's boundaries and the slides themselves. Last but not least, I want to talk about the dress at this park. Because of the lack of body slides, this is one of the few water parks you can wear a shirt on every attraction. I strongly recommend this for a few reasons. Not only does it protect against the sun, but the water in Wildebeest, and especially Mammoth, is unbelievably frigid. I also recommend goggles for the water coasters because they constantly spray mist in your eyes. Oh, and because this is Holiday World, they also provide complimentary sunscreen, which is really nice. I typically spend a few hours at Splash and Safari each time I visit Holiday World. 
unless I'm there for Halloween nights, I always get to splash in Safari at opening to beat the crowds. The water coasters almost always have a longer line than the roller coasters on the dry side. Earlier this year, I made a countdown for my favorite water parks and Splash and Safari placed fourth. There are a few notable parks I haven't visited in the US, such as Schlitterbahn, Waterworld, and Volcano Bay, but Splash and Safari stands out because of its great customer service and trio of water coasters. Even as I visit more water parks, I expect Splash and Safari to still place quite highly since it's the undisputed king of water coasters in my opinion. So those are my thoughts on Splash and Safari, the attached water park at Holiday World. Have you been here? What are your thoughts on Splash and Safari, whether it be the park itself or any of the slides? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.